Welcome to the Ultralight Airplane Workshop. My name is Leon. It's been a few weeks since I did the composites video, so let's get back to that. What I'd like to do now is to build a mold for the rudder of the UWS-1 Ultralight Airplane. The way I plan on doing the construction on the UWS-1 Ultralight Airplane is to use vacuum resonant fusion of carbon fiber and I'm going to use molds to make those carbon fiber parts. For most of these molds, I'm going to use a plug to make the molds. Now for the rudder, I've already made this plug. And if you didn't see the videos on making this plug, I'll put a link up here in the upper right hand corner to part one of that series of making this plug. Before I make my molds though, I really do need to have an idea of how I'm going to make the parts, how I want to fit them together. Almost everything on the airplane is made of multiple parts. So, for example, on the rudder of the UWS-1 Ultralight Airplane, I'd have to have, at a minimum, two parts. One part could be the entire flying surface and the top end, but I could not enclose it. I'd have to leave an opening in order to pull my part out, and then i have to have an end rib. So, at the minimum, I would need at least two parts, but I think I'm going to need more. So let's talk a little bit about the way I'm thinking of making the parts for the rudder. I've drawn out some sheets, kind of crudely, but I've drawn out some sheets of at least one possibility of how I would make the parts for the rudder. On this drawing that I have here, there are three parts visible. There are two surfaces, one on each side of the rudder, and then there's a spar. And I would have caps, a top cap and a bottom cap. So that would be at least five parts. So for these two outer surfaces, what kind of mold could I use to make these parts? Now you could try to argue that it should be one part. Now in order to do that, my mold would have to be enclosed and I would have to get my carbon fiber, my vacuum hose, my feeder hose, my tacky tape all inside. And that's just not practical. So for these outer surfaces, there'll probably have to be at least two molds. At least that's what I'm thinking. For the spar, there'll probably have to be a mold. And then for each end cap, which would be kind of like ribs on each end, there'd have to be a mold for each one of those. Let's talk a little bit about how I'm thinking of constructing at least the first rudder. Now, as you can see from this drawing, on each of the surfaces, I have an outer layer of biaxial carbon fiber, an inner layer of biaxial carbon fiber, and then in two locations for each surface, I have some foam. Now, at the moment, I don't know yet which biaxial carbon fiber, it could be the 100 gram per square meter. It could be the 150 gram per square meter. It could be 200 gram per square meter or even higher. Or I could actually switch over to two layers. I don't know that yet. I'm gonna have to do some testing. The spar would be constructed in a similar manner. There are a few little details I'm not gonna get into here. We'll actually be making videos of how I'm gonna construct this rudder. So I'll get into some of those details there. Well, let's concentrate on these surfaces. How are we going to make a mold for these surfaces? Each of these surfaces is going to have to have its own mold. A mold for this side couldn't be used to make a mold for the bottom side. I also have some nice little drawings here. Let's say I wanted to make a mold for the side that's facing up here. So let's take a look at this drawing that I have. So in this drawing, this gray area here is the rudder plug that we have set in front of us. The blue area would be the mold itself. Now you also see I have something called flange surface. The flange surfaces allow me to extend the mold out past my plug. I'm going to need that because where I have these flange surfaces marked, that is what I'm going to use to, for my area of tacky tape. So I can put a vacuum bag down. This flange material will be made of a plastic so that epoxy won't stick to it. And I'm going to have to adhere it in place so it can't move it around. So I'll probably have to use some sort of tape to hold it in place. And then I will also have to fashion something like a thick plastic sheet or some hardboard or some cardboard and hot glue those in place so they can't move around. This dark blue line around here, that will be mold surface and it will be made up of several layers of fiberglass. Now that will be laid on this plug. It'll go back from the back flange all the way up over to that front flange. I will also have to make some flanges here on the ends so I can bring the mold out a little bit past the ends on each end, the top and the bottom. 
I'm going to do a little experimenting to see what I like here. I want that to be fairly stiff. It doesn't have to be so stiff that it can't be bent at all because I plan to reinforce it. So I'm going to do a little experimentation to just see how thick I want to make it and the layups I want to use. My current plan is to use a fairly fine fiberglass, either a mesh or a plain weave against the mold surface itself. And then I'll put a heavier plain weave behind that and then a heavier plain weave even on the third layer. Now that might be enough. I might add more layers though as an experiment of that heavier stuff just to see how thick I want it to be. So that will cover a little over half of the mold surface. What I want to do is bring it around the nose so that I can accommodate where I'm bringing the carbon fiber around the nose for the overlap. So that's why it's coming down around this nose. And then I've drawn on here also that I've got stiffeners here. And those stiffeners will run kind of in the same direction as rib would. There will be at least one at the bottom end and one at the top end. I also will have some stiffeners along the bottom and also have a stiffener roughly where the thickest part of the plug is. So here I've got a drawing where I plan to put those stiffeners. Now out here on the outer edge is where the bigger stiffeners will be. So they will come to a flat area so that I can set this down flat on a table. So that'll be along the thickest part of the plug at each end. And then it'll have to be two pieces along this rear flange. There'll be one that runs to about here and then another one that runs to about here. In between, depending on how stiff that surface is on my mold, I may put some smaller ribs in between to make it a little bit stiffer. Now I have a plan for doing that. Now, how am I going to make these stiffeners? I'm not positive. Right now I'm thinking of some half inch or three quarter inch plywood that I'll cut to the correct shape and the correct heights so when we turn it over it can lay flat. And then I'll put fiberglass over that, probably at least two layers. And I'll we'll tab those in then to the fiberglass surface. Once it gets cured, I'll be able to pop it off and we should have a pretty nice mold. Once we have the mold made, we're going to want to use it. So let's talk a little bit of how I'll use this mold. So this blue area again is the mold. In order to make the part, what I'll do is I'll put down my layer of carbon fiber. I'll start back here on the flange, but not all the way back. I'm going to leave at least an inch on this back edge of the flange because that is where my tacky tape is going to be for my vacuum bag. And again, on this other flange, same thing. Now I will run that carbon fiber all along this face. And then for this particular part, what we need to do is add a little bit of space right here in the nose. Because if you'll remember, we're going to have some overlap. So the one we're looking at here is the one that goes on the inside. Let's say it's coming up like this. I want it to come in and make a joggle. So what I need to do is add some tape right here on the very leading edge of this mold that is the same thickness as the part that's going to overlap the part we're going to make. And then I run it up onto the flange. Now these little thin lines that you see on here, that is where I'll end up trimming the part two. Now on the other part that doesn't do the inside joggle, there won't be any tape there. It'll just come right around the nose. Here on the back edge is another issue. You can see this little black kind of triangular area. That is going to be filler. I'm going to have to put a little bit of filler in there before I put that first layer in because that first layer is not going to be able to make that tight little jog to that corner and up around. So what I need to do is put some filler in there, which will be so be epoxy mixed with some charcoal or epoxy mixed with some milled carbon fiber, something like that, that can be a little ramp there. That'll be underneath that first layer. Then I've got two pieces of foam I'm going to put in. So that'll provide the thickness, the middle layer for my sandwich. This back one, I probably just can lay right in, no problem. This front one is going to have a little curvature to it. Now, I'm only talking about eighth inch foam here. Let me get a piece. That eighth inch foam might be able to make that curvature. Or if it can't, I could just do a little scribing here on the very front edge to make sure it makes that curvature. But what I'd really like to do is heat it up and make it soft and then push it down into that mold, let it cool down, and then it should cool to that curvature. And then there's actually no stress in that foam. That'd be great if I can do that. I'm going to try. Once I get those two pieces of foam down, 
and you'll notice that there's a little joggle here where the spar is going to go. I may end up putting some unidirectional tape in there for a spar cap. It's very possible. And then I put down my next layer of carbon fiber. Once I get that done, I make sure my tacky tape is down on my flanges all the way around the mold because there'll be extra flange all the way around. I'll put in my resin feed line, the vacuum line. And by the way, on this part, that resin feed line will probably run right down the middle of the part. That way it'll feed down the middle and the resin will flow out to these edges. And that isn't very far to flow. That should work fine with no problem. Put down my vacuum bag, pull the vacuum, and infuse the resin. Let's talk about